What is up guys and welcome back to the Johnny Q channel. Thanks so much for watching. In today's video, we're talking all about this camera right here. The Canon, the Canon EOS R. Let me brief you really quick. This is not an in-depth review just yet. That will come later. This is just me owning this camera for one whole month and kind of my overall review so far and how I've been dealing with it and telling you guys what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And so let's just let's just get right into it. So here it is, the Canon EOS R. It is super light. Look at this, look how tiny and small and compact this thing is. It like can fit in my pocket and it's just, mm, and I'm all about compact. I'm all about like on the go, like get it out of the bag and like get pictures, get video and all that. I bought this camera used and it was less than $2,000. So to get a pro camera, a pro Canon DSLR for under two grand is just owning it for about a month. It's really, it's been great for me as a photographer and a videographer. I've used this camera for two things and that's professional shoots and overall vlogging. Now I'm not doing it with this video obviously. Right now I'm shooting on the Canon 60 Mark II. But everything else that I do is on this thing, the Canon EOS R. Because I transitioned from the Canon 60 Mark II to the EOS R, there was a little bit of a learning curve. Not the menu system because they're both Canon, but the layout and the buttons of everything so that I can get to camera settings to video settings. There's a little, little bit of a quirk here and there, but you kind of get used to it. For example, the Canon 60 Mark II, I could switch from video to photo just like that. There's a little knob here that I could just switch, right? But with the Canon EOS R, you kind of have to do this. So right now I'm in photo mode. If I wanted to get to video mode, I can't just switch a button because there's no button for it, but I would have to, uh, let me say this, I've customized my EOS R to fit my specifications from switching to video and photo and vice versa. So my customized bar, if you will, or buttons is the star and then info. When I press star and info, hold on. So when I press star and info and then the shutter button, it switches over to video mode. Now, if I wanted to go back to photo mode, I would do star, info, shutter button. And that'll bring me back to the photo mode. That's a little bit of a hassle, but it's okay. It's not that much different from shooting like this and then, okay, hold on, I have to go to video mode, taking my right hand or left hand and then going and switching those and then going back to my settings from my photo or video shoot. So it's really not that much of a difference. But I did notice it where it kind of was like, oh, kind of a bummer. I wish that photo and video switch were there. So take it for what it is. But that to me, it kind of bothered me. Going off of the controls and the buttons and the customization, this camera is full of customization. Wow, wow. You can customize this camera to what you need as I've already done. And all these buttons and knobs, I'm obviously still learning. You can get different things. You can customize your camera to what you want, but like, Something to note is the record button is no longer, again, on the back of the camera. It's up here. And it's it's not annoying, but it kind of is annoying. And if you're someone like me who's always on the go and needs to switch from photos to video with like, just like that, I want to be able to rely on my camera as I did with the Canon 60 Mark II and press the record button with my thumb. Now I have to like, think about it and it's actually my finger. It's, you might think it's not a big deal, but again, when you're out shooting, you're already, your thumb's already back here. You know, as you're already shooting, your thumb is back here and you can't really press record. You have to think about it and it's actually up here. And it's not next to the shutter where your finger is, but it's like behind the shutter. So you have to actually think about it as you're shooting. Video mode, I go to star, info, shutter button, switches over to video. Then I send my index, this is my index. Then I send this finger back here and I press record. It's kind of like, look, I kind of have a, like a weird, it kind of seems like I'm doing this video and I'm ripping on the USR. I'm not, but these are things that are coming to mind that I kind of dislike about the R and something that's different than my 6D Mark II. And that's this right here. The mic input is now down here on the Canon 6D Mark II. It used to be up here, but this is for something else. So if you come down here, you want to put in a mic input or a microphone, you just take this little rubber off and you, you stick it in there. So it's kind of like, why would you do that? And I, you're like, why would you mention that? Well, because of this, let, let me show you. You got your microphone or whatever eighth inch you have, you plug it into the mic input and you bring out your camera screen and you want to tilt it towards you. Oh no, what am I going to do? And I literally thought, oh no, I just spent like $2,000 on a camera that I can't swivel the screen because my stupid 
eighth inch is in the way. My stupid microphone cord is in the way. What am I gonna do? So again, I have to think about it, but in order for me to flip it out, I have to, like, I have to bring it towards me, flip it, and then bring it out. But still, it's enough to really irritate me. I'm like, oh, okay, I really wanna see what that looks like, but I can't, can't get it, so I have to bring it back, tilt it towards me, and then, I'm good to go. So this is small things, Canon. Like, I just, I don't know why you did that. And obviously when you get the EOS R, it's a new mount. It's a whole new system for different lenses. So your normal EF lenses don't really fit natively on the camera. So you have to also purchase this adapter, which I picked up for, I think a couple hundred bucks. It came with the camera, pretty good deal. This adapter allows me to use different glass like this. And I can still put it on there. Autofocus works just as well as it would be natively on the camera uh, and it's super fast focusing like all that stuff is still good to go versus like having a sony and putting uh, an adapter like this it kind of hunts for that focus doesn't really know what to do with itself but when i put native lenses with native camera and camera body and system can't complain one other point and one other thing that i do appreciate about the eusr is this when you turn it on it does this and when you turn it off it does this I love that. Yeah. yeah. So this little screen door or cover over the sensor really acts like a safety feature. And for me, it's like I have less OCD about covering and I still cover my sensor obviously, but it's just like, oh, this little cover is covering it. So I don't have to really think about it as hard or as much. So my overall experience in like the first month that I've had this camera is good. It's not bad. I will say it's a little bit better from the Canon 16 Mark II as far as image quality. And like the first video that I posted, I saw an instant like, whoa, it actually looks really good compared to my Canon 16 Mark II. And people have like texted me and saying, hey, your videos look a lot better after the USR. My wife was like, oh, I, I see the difference. Now I don't know if it's because it's a new camera and you can like, quote unquote, see the difference kind of thing. No, no, don't do that. So overall, yeah, with both photo and video quality, I'm impressed and I love the camera. Other than the, the few, you know, buttons and scrolly things and, you know, being able to customize your own settings, I'm still getting the hang of this camera, but it's by no means more difficult to deal with. It's actually easier, especially because it's so light. Paired with the L lens just like this, I mean, it's super light, super compact, and I can get the job done professionally and really, really well. I'm gonna pull a Jared pull and... It smells like a camera, so I like it. One thing I do appreciate about the EOS R, it takes the classic batteries. Now I did, I was trying to get into the EOS RP, but then I realized that those batteries are like this small and last like 30 minutes. These things will go out for five, six, sometimes seven hours on a full video and photo day. So it's a plus. You can use your Canon 60 Mark II or any, you can take your other camera bodies that take the LP EN6 battery and use that for your EOS R. So for that, thank you Canon, you, you did that. One of the things I don't use on this camera is the one 4K, not yet, uh, and two, I don't use the 120 FPS, only because it shoots in 720p. I don't use 720p. This is the day and age of 1080 and 4K. If I were to use 720, it would have to be the right setting. It'd have to be all on manual focus with the right lighting. I'd have to control the situation. I can't just go out and shoot like really cool pieces of slow motion in 720. Uh, at 120 frames a second if it's not gonna be that level of quality I'm used to or my audience is used to. So one thing you should know. Nope, 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 buddy, nope. Please no. So if you're looking into the EOS R for the hyped up specs, hi buddy. <laughs> Maybe this camera is good for you, but you might wanna rethink the 120 frames per second. What's up, bud? Ethan is gonna say hello. Overall, yeah, that is my one month review, kind of a short review, kind of what you should expect with the EOS R. And in another three weeks, uh, after I've done some more projects with it and kind of traveled, I'll do a full review on what I do think about this and how I like it, how it's worked for me as a photographer, videographer, and all this other stuff. So thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time on the John and Q channel. Peace.